Coming up on the best Kickstarter games of December 2016. A dog dreaming of his owner, an ode to Final Fantasy, and a colossus-sized adventure in primal Africa. But first, a quick reminder, and then let's recap our Kickstarter games from November. Hey everyone, this is a reminder that the 10 best indie games of 2016 will be decided by you, the viewers of Indieformer. Just take our survey, link in the description to pick which games you think are 2016's best. We'll tally up the results and put out the final video on December 31. For full details, head on over to our subreddit. And now, back to the top 5 Kickstarter games of December. Four of our five November games were successfully funded. Nykra, the platformer adventure game, had a blistering finish to its campaign to successfully top its goal of 35,000 New Zealand dollars. In some other good news, Nykra will also be coming to the PS4. Shattered, the side-scroller with 3D boss fights and a deep lore, earned an impressive 110,000 euros to beat out its target by more than 30,000. The Station, an eerie space adventure set in an AR-integrated world, comfortably reached its 10,000 Canadian dollar aim. Agony, the most hellish of video game hells, scorched at 66,000 Canadian dollar aim by more than 100,000, unlocking stretch goals like a VR edition and multiple endings. Quad Core was the unlucky game, not reaching its 7,000 pound target goal. There is currently no word on what will happen with the project. But now, let's tuck into December's best Kickstarter offerings. After his owner is hit by a truck and put into a coma, Balthazar chases after him and fends off nefarious forces in a bizarre dream world. To reach his owner, Balthazar has a lot of platforming to do, with swinging vines and bouncing mushrooms abound. Spicing this regular formula up is a collection of dog-inspired quirks. See, Balthazar has the limitations of any canine. Too many toys and squirrels will exhaust Balthazar's focus and cause you to lose control of him. Similarly, a vacuum cleaner will make Balthazar scatter in fear, whilst toy balls will spur him on to chase after it faster. Whilst creative, these measures seem a bit restrictive, and potentially even punitive and archaic. But, as the three-person team behind Balthazar's dream explain, you not only work around these features, but leverage them to your advantage. The extra speed gain from running away from a vacuum cleaner or to a toy ball allows you to jump further. We're not sure how exactly this will all mesh, but having to quickly react to your surroundings commonly makes for a dynamic platformer. Other gameplay tidbits we like include a whole level in which you fly on a frisbee, lethal chocolate hazards, and the overall fast pace. It would be remiss of us to not also mention the stunning pixel art that, from the cutscenes to the in-game levels, looks stunning. Never have we seen such a beautiful pixel dog. The charming yet tragic story is another large selling point. Already funded with more than two weeks to go, Balthazar's dream is chasing stretch goals that will unlock more dogs including a pug. The difference between old and new can sometimes just be a matter of perspective. Robonauts, an old school arcade shooter, is made new by what is quite literally a new perspective. All fighting takes place on tiny planets that you travel around in circles. Getting to the next place is a matter of hopping onto another planet and again shifting your perspective with a 180 degree swing. The first world alone will have 50 planets within it. The contrasting colours of Robonauts pop off the screen and make the ingeniously designed planets vibrant. Add in the happy techno pop music and Robonauts makes for an instant aesthetics and mood pleaser. Overall, nothing that Robonauts has put into its Kickstarter is bad. Everything showcased is polished. But we don't feel Robonauts has given us enough detail, especially when it comes to gameplay. 
The Kickstarter even explicitly states, there are no words to adequately describe the Robonaut universe. That's why we have a video, so you can judge for yourself. As you can see for yourself, the trailer gives a good sense of how the game plays, but it would have been nice to get filled in on basic curiosities like weapons, controls, and enemy types. With just a few days to go, Robonauts is struggling, with only 20% of its 35,000 goal complete. Now my children bicker over trivial matters, killing themselves mindlessly. Le Grand Legacy is a JRPG for PC, or more accurately, a Final Fantasy game that is not actually a Final Fantasy game. Its story, featuring an otherworldly invasion and a reluctant hero, is classic Final Fantasy. So too is its cast of heroes, composed of a K-pop band of five young and beautiful warrior wizards, and what looks like Aslan the Lion suited up in samurai armor. The name Le Grand Legacy even sounds like the name of a knockoff Final Fantasy title. Alas, when you realize that the development studio has called themselves semi-soft, it's all just ton-in-cheek fun. Le Grand Legacy has some straight-up sensational graphics. We should make you aware, however, that the cinematics do look much different to the in-game visuals, with the turn-based battles looking more like Fire Emblem on the 3DS. That's not necessarily a bad thing, just something to be aware of. On the topic of combat, Le Grand Legacy has an interesting interruption system that allows you to counter an enemy during their turn. We also like how you can refurbish and recruit NPCs to your headquarters, as well as play minigames there. Another neat feature is the ability to deploy your army on a war map. With a week to go, Le Grand Legacy needs 30,000 more pounds to bring its grand visuals and epic JRPG style to PC. Odyssey is a mist-like exploration game that sets out to teach the history of science. From the Greek philosophers who determined that the world wasn't flat, to Galileo and the idea of freefall motion, Odyssey chronicles many historical periods and concepts. Rather than be blurted at you through narration or text, these ideas are explained via the game's many puzzles. Not only does this make for a more seamless game, it emphasizes scientific reasoning over answers. The developers also hope that solving these puzzles will give the players the same sense of discovery as the historical scientists experienced. The underlying motive being that Odyssey can provide an alternative and in some cases better scientific education for students. Aside from being so clever and noble in its intentions, there is a lot to like about Odyssey. Rescuing a missing 13 year old girl and her family provides a realistic and compelling narrative. The colours, especially those of the turquoise waters, the textures, setting, lighting, shadows and the depth of field, every visual element is on point. Then there's the journal pages and the childlike doodles and the quality voice acting. Everything made so far for this game is incredibly refined and impressive. Odyssey has already been funded and will be coming out next May on Windows and Mac. Voodoo is an online multiplayer game in which you survive the wilds of prehistoric Africa. The first thing you notice about Voodoo is that it has these gigantic Shadow of the Colossus-like creatures to fight. Given the many odes to the legendary PS2 title such as Titan Souls and Jotun, it's almost become its own genre, indie games paying homage to Shadow of the Colossus. Voodoo, however, has a point of distinction. It's born from an idea, a twist on Colossus. That idea? What if we could battle these giants with other people? Immediately, this gives Voodoo an identity and sets the scene for a very exciting game. Defeating the giants known as Ezimu will grant you a totem that'll upgrade your village to the next civilization level, a la Age of Empires. As is fitting of the primal setting, you start with absolutely nothing. You need to make your own tools and clothes and gather your own food, and eventually form a tribe and village. 
With many unique items, crafting gives you many options, including 8,000 different possible weapon configurations. Speaking of weapons, the fighting already looks sophisticated, with shields, bows, spears, dodges and parries. The setting is a huge part of Voodoo. Loosely based on Primal Africa, Voodoo not only looks cool, but feels fresh. The locales are stunning, with the all-consuming orange of the savanna contrasting with the lush and multicoloured jungle. The characters with their clothes and paints also add a lot of flavour. As much as we like Voodoo, we do have our concerns. For instance, will the game be able to host a lot of players without lag? What about the number of players online? Will there be enough to make the game engaging? And how are the developers going to handle hackers? These are questions that apply to any unreleased online multiplayer game, but they are still valid, especially for an independent studio without a lot of external support. With three weeks left, Voodoo needs a bit less than 20,000 euros to get funded. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.